In 1980, Mount St. Helens, located in southern Washington, showed the world how powerful and destructive sleeping volcanoes can be. On March 16, 1980, the first sign of activity at Mount St. Helens occurred as a series of small earthquakes rocked the area, followed by hundreds of aftershocks. Scientists from the United States Geological Survey began installing instruments to monitor the mountain, fearing of a potential eruption. While the blast affected thousands of people in the Pacific Northwest, two individuals come to mind when you think about the eruption. The two men were Harry R. Truman and David Johnston. Harry R. Truman was a bootlegger and prospector who was the owner and caretaker of the Mount St. Helens Lodge at Spirit Lake, near the base of the mountain. As earthquakes began to increase and fear the mountain could erupt, state officials tried desperately to get him to evacuate his cabin, but he refused to leave his home with his 16 cats. He's famously said, if the mountain goes, I'm going with it. David Johnston, a scientist from the United States Geological Survey, was stationed just six miles north of the mountain with his camper. He knew all signs indicated an eruption, but wanted to be front and center to record the mountain's first movement. It was on the early morning of Sunday, May 18th, at 8.32 in the morning, that the mountain awoke by a 5.1 earthquake. This triggered a landslide on the north slope that started one of the largest eruption the country has ever seen. David Johnston was able to get one last message out before the lateral blast reached him in a matter of seconds. This was his last recording. <laughs> Locals could only watch in horror as the mountain roared over the area. The ash cloud reached 80,000 feet into the atmosphere over the course of the day. As prevailing winds blew 520 million tons of ash eastward across the United States, this caused complete darkness in cities like Spokane, Washington. The Toodle River became flooded with 46 billion gallons of icy glacier water and rubble, destroying everything in its path. This flooded local communities and highways. Forests around the mountain were flat, and about 90 square miles of forest habitat were lost. Since the event happened on a Sunday, less people were on the mountain that fateful morning. Loggers that worked that day were men who needed to earn extra money to support their family. Today, the very ridge David Johnston witnessed Mount St. Helens awoke is now named after him. The Johnston Ridge Observatory the observatory has a picture-perfect view of Mount St. Helens just as David had. The building is full of eruption photos, volcanic rocks and dramatic videos about the eruption. Approximately 750,000 people visit the mountain per year.